Hello people, my name is Overcharged Egg and I run the City Skylines YouTube channel where I focus on slow, detailed vanilla cities. Today I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive and I'm very excited to be talking to you about the plazas and promenades expansion for City Skylines. Although I am playing on the PC, everything we talk about here will apply to those on the consoles too. This expansion for City Skylines allows us to craft some huge pedestrianised areas, including little suburban bus terminals, right up to enormous downtown commercial strips. There is a lot of content to get involved with here, and over the course of the next four videos, I'll be walking you through everything that you need to know. Let's have a look at it, shall we? A trip into Google Earth can well be worth it to find some points of inspiration from the real world before you start building your first pedestrianised area in city skylines. Start by selecting an area that you would like to make pedestrianised using the new type of area tool. Pedestrian areas will unlock at the third milestone in Tiny Town. Once you have your chosen area painted out, you're going to need to place a service point. These buildings will allow garbage and goods to be collected and delivered from your new area. Service points come in two different sizes and three different types. A general service area will cover both garbage and cargo, while garbage service points and cargo service points both handle their namesake. These service point buildings are essential as each has a capacity and you'll need to make sure that you stay on top of the demand for your area. In your roads menu, you will also notice a new tab for pedestrian roads. These new networks come in five different types across three different styles. Sandstone, bluestone, and cobblestone. As you draw them out, you will notice a new option within your road tools. This new icon will force the newly painted pedestrian zone out with the road, so you don't need to double back later and extend the district. And you can also toggle this option off as well if you prefer. New roads look absolutely fantastic and I'm really looking forward to what the community is going to do with these. Maybe you'd like a bus flowing through your new pedestrian area. Or perhaps weave public transport networks through them. Or use the new wall to wall specialisation, which we'll discuss in a future video in this series to create enclosed plaza spaces. All in all, there are a total of 30 different new pedestrian streets for you to choose from, and you can use these streets away from pedestrian areas if you wish. However, it is important to keep in mind that any buildings placed on these streets outside of a pedestrian area will need a pedestrian area and a service point in order for them to function. And lastly, your pedestrian roads will come with a fantastic new feature, the introduction of functional bollards in city skylines. At the entrance to your pedestrian streets, you will see bollards automatically appear to discourage vehicles from entering them. When a vehicle needs to enter or exit the pedestrian street, they will stop and wait for the bollard to retract into the street before driving past. How cool is that? Possibilities are truly endless with the plazas and promenades expansion, and I'm really excited to see what everyone can piece together using these new assets, whether or not you decide to go for smaller suburban designs or huge downtown commercial strips. In the next video of this series, we will be covering how you can manage and progress your new pedestrian areas and taking a look at lots more cool new stuff that's coming with this pack. Don't forget to like this video and of course subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video in this series. Otherwise, let's thank you all so much for watching and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.